different thoughts on what to do with wealth. Economic theories of the Industrial Revolution. During the Enlightenment and the Scientific Revolution, thinkers looked for natural laws that governed everything around them. This included how the planets moved in the sky, how governments operated best to meet the needs of their citizens, and how economics governed the world of business and industry. The ideas formed then and during the Industrial Revolution have influenced the approaches governments have taken toward the business world throughout history and into the present. Many Enlightenment thinkers believed that the best thing governments could do when it came to the economy was to simply stay out of the way and let the marketplace, a general term for consumers and buyers, decide what should be made and how much it should be sold for. This economic system is called capitalism. In this system, entrepreneurs, or people with money to invest in businesses and ideas, use their capital, or money, to create companies that would make products or provide services to people and make them a profit. This was an economic idea proposed by Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nations, first published in 1776. In his book, Smith argued that the invisible hand, or the ability of the marketplace, and not the government, was best able to respond to public demand for goods and services. Because the government did not play a role in the economy, economists called this kind of economy laissez-faire, which was French for allow to do, or allow to make, capitalism. Over time, laissez-faire has come to be known as hands-off capitalism as the government is encouraged to do as little as possible when it comes to the economy and allow the marketplace to function as it wants. Capitalism pushes the idea that there should be no government regulation of anything to do with business in order to benefit all the people. Throughout the 1800s, as the Industrial Revolution grew in Europe, capitalism became the dominant economic system. Wealth increased tremendously for some, and the middle class increased in size. However, factory workers, many of whom used to be farmers but had been moved off their land due to the enclosure system, worked 12 to 16 hours a day, six days a week, with only 30 minutes for lunch and dinner. There was no such thing as a minimum wage or workman's compensation for injuries suffered on the job and a worker could be fired at any time for any reason. Some of these people and others began to see capitalism as an unfair economic system, where the rich got richer and the poor got poorer, and began to wonder if the government should be playing some role in protecting the lives of the people who could not afford to protect themselves. The new economic system that developed was called socialism, in this system, the government owns and controls the means of manufacturing and is responsible for planning the economy. It was created in an effort to eliminate the differences between rich and poor. In this system, where the government owns the means of manufacturing, businesses, and property, it is the government who decides what will be produced and distributes the wealth evenly. The government decides what kind of working conditions are safe, how many hours a week an employee may work, what the minimum wage is, and how old people have to be before they can work. Utopian socialists in the 1800s hoped that a spirit of cooperation would develop between business owners and workers that would replace the marketplace competition of capitalism. One business owner who tried to cooperate with his workers to create that kind of society was Robert Owen. He started as a poor boy who worked in factories. He saved his money, and eventually he became a factory owner himself. He refused to use child labor and set up a planned community at New Lanark, Scotland, where the children of workers were given an education, while the entire community worked together to make that community successful. Owen was a utopian socialist who believed that the perfect industrial society could be created. Unfortunately, 
his dream died when no other business owner wanted to join his enterprise. The problem that socialist economies faced was that having the government regulate the production and distribution of goods was often inefficient. And while they tried to help meet the basic needs of workers, even there they had little success. The German philosopher Karl Marx developed a new theory that developed into an economic system called communism. He wrote a pamphlet in 1848 called the Communist Manifesto, in which he outlined his ideas for a society that he believed would benefit everyone. Communism would bring about a classless society in which the means of production would be owned by all for the common good of all. Marx argued that human history was a struggle between the haves, which in his mind were represented by the bourgeoisie, and the have-nots, which were represented by the proletariat, or the working class. Marx predicted that eventually the proletariat would get fed up with their position in life and rise up and overthrow the bourgeoisie. They would take over the means of production and set up a classless society. The struggles of the past would end because wealth and power would be shared equally. Marx urged, workers of the world, unite. Over time, however, the standard of living for members of the working class improved in industrial countries. Marx's belief that workers around the world would join together despite their being in different countries never happened. By the end of the 1900s, countries like the Soviet Union, which had relied on communism for so long, collapsed and moved back toward a free market and capitalist economy.